Howdy, howdy. Welcome back to my channel, Passion Theory, where I share with you some of my passions. This particular one being art and drawing in particular. So what I'm doing today is I'm taking one of my previous artworks, um, which is an Angora rabbit with Love in the Mist flowers. And I am going to be doing the line work for it to prep for doing the um, watercolor and Copic versions of it. The black and white line art version of it is already up in my Etsy shop. This is just um, a prepping stage to show you how I do my line work because some people like the line work. So the line work will be by its own video by itself. And then the um, next video you get about this one will be me doing the Copic markers and then after that, the watercolors. So the first step I do is I um, put on, draw with pencil on my paper here, my line, uh, my artwork, and then we're gonna go over it with my Copic multi-liners. All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna tell you guys one of another one of my mom's spooky stories that happened when she was growing up. So this happened in a small town in Florida. Um, I'm not gonna say the name of the town because she currently lives there. So she moved back there. So many weird stuff happened in this town. But she moved back. I I think she's like a glutton for punishment. Anyway, she lived there most of her life and um she would drive by this house when she was a kid, you know, like her parents would drive by or she'd walk by, um, things like that. Cause it's a small town. And, um, there was like this house on a corner that was painted pink and it always was boarded up and looked abandoned, except for that the grass was always fresh mowed and it always looked like the paint was fresh. like. It looked well kept, but the windows were all boarded up and the doors were all boarded up. And there was never a car in the driveway, no kids' toys, no indication that anybody ever actually lived there, right? So one day she was walking to her grandma's house, which she lived in the same um, neighborhood, and she walked by the pink house. And lo and behold, she noticed a little girl playing in the front yard and all of the boards were taken off the window and doors. There, there was no boards on windows or doors. And the little girl asked her to play with her. And so she did and they played all day and she doesn't like looking back on it now, she doesn't remember there ever ever seen an adult. Um, she didn't go inside the house, and she just played with the little girl all day. And then she went to her grandma's house after a few hours. And then the next day, she was walking home. Or the next, she had stayed with her grandma for a couple days. So it's like the weekend or something. So the next, you know, the next time she was walking back to her house, however long she stayed with her grandma, I'm, I'm not 100% certain on that. But uh, she was walking back to her home from her grandma's house. And she noticed that all the boards were back up in the windows and all the boards were back up in the doors just like they were before. Right? <laughs> and then years went by. Because the first time this happened, she was like, you know, seven or eight. Because in small towns back then, people let their kids wander around. And um, so a few years go by and she's like 10 or 11. And the same thing happens, but she's completely forgotten this by now. Like she just kind of thought it was weird when she was a kid, but she didn't make any like special note of it. And then she walked by the pink house and there was a little girl in the front yard who asked her to play.
play with her. And there were no boards on the windows or doors. And so my mom played with her for an hour or two. And then went about whatever she was doing. And then lo and behold, the next time they drove by that house, it was all boarded up again. And it hadn't been very long. And when she saw the boards back on the windows and doors, that's when all of a sudden out of nowhere she remembered her past experience there. Now that's weird enough, right? But remembering back, it was the same little freaking girl and she was the same freaking age. She hadn't aged. She was like still eight or nine, right? And then it gets worse because a couple more years go by and now she's like 12 or 13 and she walks past this house again on her way to go do something and the you know she's walked past the house several times it's not like this happens every time she walks past the house and she only walks past the house every couple of years or something no she walks past it on a weekly basis right and has never seen anyone go in or out or anything so she walks past the house again one time and she's about 12 or 13 and once again there's a little girl in the yard but my mom does not remember does not remember right and the little girl asks her to play with her and she kind of like humors her and sort of plays with her as a 13 year old might like a lonely eight-year-old for you know like a half an hour or so and then gets on with her day and then the next time she goes by the house it's all boarded up and bam when she sees the boards she remembers she remembers again. And here's the thing. It's not like her, she has a memory lapse between the different years. Like, she can remember this happening until she comes to the house and the boards aren't there and the little girl's there. She can't remember it only then, right? She remembers it, like, um, after the first time it happened. She could remember it up until that day when the girl appeared again right? And the same thing happened. She remembered it the whole time because they would tell stories about the pink house that doesn't change. And she's like, yeah, I played with the little girl there twice and she didn't age and it was weird and there was no one else there. Right? So it's, it's not like she doesn't remember this. She doesn't remember it whenever she sees the little girl and the little girl asks her to play. It's like it blinks out of her mind. And then you know, she doesn't remember again until she sees the house boarded up. It's almost like she doesn't even remember playing with the little girl after she's done playing with her until she sees the house boarded up again. So <clears throat> this time she sees the house boarded up and she decides, you know, I'm going to go peek in the windows. And so she peeks in the windows and like the inside of the house is completely empty. Like she peeks in between the boards. And the house is empty on the inside. Like, nobody could be living there. And so, um, she was just kind of freaked out. And she, uh, went back home. And, you know, she kept an eye on the place ever since then. But it never happened again. It only happened those three times. And um, the pink house was there when she moved. Um, the first time she moved. But when she came back, it had since been um, demolished. So the house is no longer there. So she couldn't show it to me when she took me on a tour of like her childhood. Um, town which was kind of sad i wanted to see the nefarious pink house hello Kali. um i had something kind of similar happen to me um when i was about eight and i like very eerily similar except for it was two girls I'll tell this story. I was wanting to tell all my mom's stories before I told my stories. But since these mirror each other so well, I'll tell it. So I lived in a trailer park. And down at the end of one of the roads was a yellow trailer. 
and it always looked abandoned, right? It wasn't boarded up, but there was never any cars in front of it. No indication anybody lived there at all, right? And all of us kids in the neighborhood, we would like try to get into the trailers that were um, empty just to like have like a little place to hang out. <laughs> we just go inside and hang out. It's trailer trailer park kid nonsense, right? We weren't like destroying anything or being rude or mean. We were just like going inside if it would happen to be unlocked or very easily unlocked. And um, we would just hang out in there. You know, because it was raining a lot of the times where I lived and stuff like that. So, and it, it seemed cool to us at the time, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so we could never get into this house. It was always locked up really good, which was fine, you know. But it, you could look in the windows and it didn't look, there was no furniture or anything inside. And so we all assumed nobody lived there. Well, one day, I was walking by because I had a friend that lived at the far end of that street and I wanted to see if she was um, available to play. So I walked down there and there were these two little girls about my age, um, an older sister and a younger sister. I'd say they were probably like, oh, the oldest one was probably like seven and the youngest one was probably five. And I was around seven at the time. and. They both had, I remember this very clearly, they both had brown hair and their eyes were what really struck me because one of them had um, one blue eye and one like brown eye and the brown eye had like almost this golden color flecks in it. And then the younger girl had one, uh, both her eyes were blue except for her second eye was half brown and with the golden specks in it. And so I just thought their eyes were gorgeous, right? And it's something very, that stands out very, very much, right? And I played with them all day long. And I never remember going inside their house. Um, we just played outside. I never saw their parents. I never saw a car. I never saw anything like that. And I know that we played with, the first time I played with them, we played with an easy bake oven that they had outside that they were trying to hook up to the electricity because the outside of trailers have like an electric outlet they can hook up and it wouldn't work. Um, so we just, meh, it didn't work. So we did something else. But I played with those girls, then could never find them again. About a year goes by and all of a sudden they're there again. and. I played with them and I would forget about them until just like my mom. I'd forget about them. When I saw them, I would forget that like their parents weren't around and things like that. And I played with them like my mom did. I probably played with them about four or five times though. Um, and they never seemed to age. And it was just like my mom. I never, I never remembered about it till afterwards. But to this day, their eyes, I still remember their eyes. Okay, so here is a close-up of the finished line work. And then we'll be doing Copics on it next time. And if you don't know what Love in the Mist is, look it up. It's a really cool flower. It's one of my favorites. And I thought that it went well with the ears of the Angora rabbit. Anyway, so that is all for this episode of Art and Stories with me. I hope you like my creepy, creepy stories. And till next time, remember to make room for your passions, and bye!